COVID Omicron variant uh, have been confirmed in Scotland this morning. The World Health Organization is warning countries to ensure mitigation plans are in place in response to the spread. The variant has an unprecedented number of spike mutations. So, is extending the booster, bringing back masks in shops and on transport enough to keep cases down? Health Minister Edward Arger joins us now. Very good morning to you. Good morning. How far spread is Omicron, do we know? Well, we've heard we've got three confirmed cases in England. We've just heard those confirmed cases in Scotland. The reality is, and Sajid Javid, the health secretary, was clear about this as well, and I, am, I would expect to see that number go up. What we've done is we've moved swiftly to put in place a number of proportionate measures to try to slow down the seeding of this new variant and the spread of it, which buys us the time, or our scientists the time, to actually understand it. How much more transmissible is it? Is it more dangerous? Um, does it resist therapeutics and drugs? And, and how does it react with the vaccine? So we've moved swiftly to buy us the time to, uh, to understand this, this new variant. OK. One of the uh, issues is we are coming up to Christmas. Um, the Prime Minister at the press conference at the weekend did not rule out further restrictions before Christmas. Are people going to have a normal Christmas this year? Well, I, over the past two years, I've been coming on your programme during this pandemic since, since it started. Um, I've learned never to try to predict this virus or what it's going to do. But I have to say, um, speaking for myself, I'm still planning to spend Christmas with family, with friends, who I wasn't able, obviously, to spend Christmas with last year. I'm still planning on that basis. And I suspect a lot of people around the country um, will have missed out last year on the normal Christmas they would expect and will be doing exactly the same. So that's, that's have, what I'm doing. The rules have changed, haven't they, uh, over mask wearing. Mask wearing has been sort of mandated now on all public transport, in schools, in uh, communal areas and schools, not in hospitality, not in restaurants. Um, I wonder whether you feel like that might be something that's going to come into play over the next few weeks, because if we're going to make all these restrictions, we're going to try and make sure we can have that Christmas we all want. It feels like, certainly as in the build-up to Christmas, there's a lot of Christmas parties, there's a lot of people commun communing uh, in, in those places, whether actually mandating masks in a hospitality would be a good idea. Well, I think you heard um, just now, I think, from one of your previous guests about the measures that the hospitality industry has already put in place um, following what happened last year, the amount of work they've done on ventilation, on contact tracing, on making their venues as safe as possible and the risk assessments they all have to do as part of the, for a better way of calling it, plan A, the current approach, which is um, based on the booster programme and the vaccination programme. So they've already done a lot to make those venues safe. And similarly, when you look at those venues, the nature of being in a pub, being in a restaurant, if you're in a restaurant, you're sitting there, you're eating, you're generally at your table. Um, people come, take your order, bring the food. Similarly, in a pub or a bar, you're often, even if you're standing up, you're drinking um, while chatting to people and so on. So I think there's also a practical element there of, of how it would work. But also, I would go back to what your previous guest was talking about, which is the amazing amount of work the hospitality industry yeah. have done. So no plans to implement that just yet because they've got mitigating sort of uh, things in place. What about schools? Teachers unions are saying you've brought it into communal areas, you've brought it into sort of corridors... What about classrooms? They'd like to see masks being brought back into the classrooms. Well, I remember it's a, a long time ago, as you can probably tell from my grey hair, but I remember when I was at school. And it was those corridors, it's when classes finished, everyone was mingling in the corridors in a small enclosed space, often in the nature of a corridor, without ventilation, without windows open, from different classes. Whereas when you're in a classroom, aside from some of the practical lessons you may do, you're generally sitting, and I think you can see it on your, uh, on your footage at the moment, sitting at your desk um, with the same group of people in the class. Now, of course, there are other measures that people should be taking alongside mask wearing in uh, the advice on mask wearing in communal areas, such as the lateral flow test and the testing regime. That's still hugely important, as, of course, will be the um, booster programme. And we wait to see what the JCVI advice is on that booster programme and whether to extend it down to lower age groups. Um, can you tell us about the uh, proposals for 12 to 15-year-olds? Because there are a lot of parents um, who are planning to travel 
with children in that age group over Christmas and New Year and a number of restrictions coming in from other countries that may mean that the 12 to 15 year olds who've only been single vaxxed would not be allowed entry. Are we going to change our rules on that age group? Well, we're awaiting, and hopefully it will come today, um, advice from the JCVI on a whole range of things that the Secretary of State, Sajid Javid, has asked them to look at in terms of boosters, gaps between um, jabs and similar. I don't know what they're going to say. I hope it will um, come today. It's certainly due imminently. In terms of restrictions on travel or conditions of travel from other countries, that largely is down to individual countries as to what they impose at their border. But that broader approach to boosters, to first and second jabs, to young people, is something the JCVI are looking at, but I don't want to prejudge the advice they'll give us. When you talk about boosters, lots of people getting in touch today, and the idea is to bring boosters forward. But they're anecdotally the problem with getting boosters and booking a booster that isn't miles away from where you are. But Amar has been in touch, uh, saying that we're over 50. I went with my wife for a booster on Saturday. We were turned away as we were one week less than the six months that you have to wait for. So you can book your booster after five months, but you have to wait six months at the moment to have your booster. They were one week less than that, and they'd queues for hours in the freezing weather. They were very frustrated by this. Is that rule going to change? Because that seems particularly harsh at a time when we've got this new variant, the government are keen to get people boosted. They were there. They were one week away from actually being part of the, the official timings that they had to wait, but they were turned away. Well, those official timings are there for a reason. They're based on the scientific advice of the JCVI, and it's important we adhere to the advice we get. Now, if they change that advice, of course, we will look at that carefully. So I can entirely understand the frustration of those individuals, but we do need to stick to the scientific advice that we've got. Um, and, and as I say, if the JCVI change that, of course, we'll look at it. But at the moment, their advice is that six-month, uh, that firm six-month gap, and therefore we do need to adhere to it. I'm still waiting to be able to have my booster because of that six-month gap. I won't be able to have that um, for a little while yet. But what I have done, which others can do, is I'm having my flu jab tomorrow. Um, different type of vaccination, but we know flu and COVID, if you get them together, are particularly unpleasant. So there are still things we can all do as well while we're waiting for our boosters. Did you say that you're going to extend the boosters to all 80, um, over 18-year-olds, or are you waiting for advice on that? We're, that's the advice we're waiting for from the JCVI, Susanna. They're looking at all these things. I don't want to prejudge what they'll tell us, um, but they, we'll hopefully get advice on a range of things from them imminently, hopefully today. And what about vaccine passports? Because right now people are wondering whether Christmas parties should go ahead. We know that you're not going to mandate masks in hospitality venues. Um, we've heard from other guests that they would like to see... Uh, people attending Christmas parties to have tested and have double vaccination. But that isn't a requirement. It's simply an encouragement. Is that something you might change? No, as, as you'll have heard, um, and, and I think when I discussed this last with you and, um, and Richard a month or so ago, that's, it's, that would essentially be part of the Plan B approach, um, working from home, vaccination certification and we were clear then and we're clear now we don't believe we need to move to that plan b we've taken a small element of it in terms of masks because of the changed circumstance of a new variant um, but we don't believe we need to do that we don't believe we need to move down that plan b path um, but we do need to see what happens in the next week or two in terms of what the scientists tell us about how this variant actually so behaves. if this variant is as virulent as it may well be and spreads and it has these mutations which means that the vaccine might not be quite as effective you can see us in the next few weeks potentially moving to plan b well you you tempt me ben i've been on uh, on uh, gmb many times over the past two years and i i try to avoid being drawn on hypotheticals i don't anticipate that happening um i am hopeful and I genuinely hope that when the scientists report back, hopefully that the, the worst concerns about this new variant won't be realised. And I'm not going to prejudge what they're going to say, but we've got to do that work. We've got to understand um, the nature of the threat we're dealing with. So I don't anticipate um, moving to Plan B or moving further in that direction. But we've taken swift and proportionate 
action um, with what we've done alongside the health secretary convening a G7 meeting of health ministers to look at this internationally because this is an international mm -hmm. problem, taking that leadership on in okay. driving forward an international um, response as well. A, and we'll uh, see what we find out. OK, a couple of other things. Um, yeah. Pre-departure tests for those people coming into the UK. Uh, why haven't you introduced those? Well, again, we've sought to strike a proportionate um, balance. You've seen the 10 countries now on the um, red list um, over the past few days. We, I think, were one of the first countries in the world to move to do that, um, countries where there were known um, cases of this new variant. But we reached equally sought to strike an appropriate balance, understanding the risk um, and a, a proper calibration of that um, between travel from countries where there is a much higher risk of this new variant and countries where there isn't. But we keep all this under careful review. Okay. And, and one other thing, Kath has got in touch um, to say, even if the JCVI changes his advice on 12 to 15 year olds and gives a second vaccine, that age group cannot get access to the NHS COVID pass. Is that the case? There is work currently being done. You'll have seen that boosters were not initially um, able to be uploaded via the COVID pass. That was changed. A lot of work was done to make sure that people who were boosted had that showing to enable them to travel. And I know that um, my colleague Maggie Throop, the vaccines minister, is looking at exactly this point. I think when I last came on your programme, you and Richard um, highlighted a particular anecdotal issue and I took it away and worked with um, Maggie on that. I think that was around the booking for boosters. Yes. So we do listen when you when you highlight these things, but I know Maggie is working um, working on that issue and the technology behind it. OK, so you're going to make sure that... Because if, if we've got 12 to 15-year-olds and they have been vaxxed and the, the rules change, we can get them double vaxxed, we definitely need that to... We need proof of that, don't we, if yeah. we're going to travel to countries which is putting in a restriction? Exactly that. So we are looking at how, um, how people who are double vaxxed can show that if they're not already included. Okay. Um, well, that's... And I know that's being done, uh, that's being looked at very urgently. Yes, well, it, it looks like it needs to be. Can't happen soon enough, can yeah. it? Especially if you want to travel. Uh, well, Health Minister Edward Alga, thank you very much for joining us.